Welcome to the Alliance series of webinars where we talk about the voluntary targets for road safety and victim support that the UN recently approved. Overall, it's the member states responsibility to meet the 12 performance targets, but the Alliance members and NGOs have at country level a very important role to play. But what are these targets? What do they mean? Why are they important? And how can you work with them as an NGO? We have zoomed in on the first target, which is establish a national action plan by 2020, as this is the foundation of all the rest of the targets. This webinar series try to address those questions and aim to show simple activities that can support delivery, monitor progress, and overall contribute meaningfully to the sustainable development goals. In this webinar, we'll meet Bright from ASSERT in Kenya. Bright will talk about the role that her NGO uh, took when they were establishing a national action plan and how she created a very strong push and, and sense of urgency in the preparation. Should you wish to learn more about the 12 performance targets, um, we have collected a number of resources for you to explore further. You can find them on our website, which is shown here. This is also where you put your questions and evaluate the webinars. And we really encourage you to evaluate them as this is, the, the, this is very important for our work moving forward. I would like to turn this over to Bright. Bright, welcome to you. Thank you. My name is Bright Dwyer. I'm the executive director for Assert Kenya, a not for profit organization that promotes road safety through education, awareness, creation, and advocacy. I will take you through my outline uh, in advocating for a national work plan in your country. First will be the background then the process of the current draft, the role played by Assert Kenya, and how NGOs can engage, and finally, the conclusion. On the background, I let you know that Kenya launched the Decade of Action for Road Safety in 2011, together with other countries across the world. And uh, as you will know, under Pillar 1, a national strategy is recommended as an activity. And for that to happen, an action plan needs to be put in place. As Kenya launched the Decade of Action, there was no lead agency that was in existence in our country. There was an action plan in case 2009 to 2014, but it was mostly just on paper and mainly a government-driven item. In 2012, through an act of parliament, Kenya established a lead agency for road safety, the National Transport and Safety Authority. This authority then took ownership of the review of the action plan. By creation of this authority, road safety responsibility was removed from being split between different government agencies, and that made it difficult to follow up and even to evaluate. So the current action plan draft has been a result of a consultative process. The zero draft by the National Transport and Safety Authority comprises of the five pillars of the decade of action. And for it to be put together, input by various stakeholders, including NGOs, was sought. In February of 2018, a consultative meeting was held and different stakeholders, including NGOs, gave their views. We are anticipating that the final document will be launched in June 2018. So what role did Assad Kenya play in the process? First, helped create a sense of urgency. 
this means that focusing the policy makers on the review of the draft. Another thing we did, we created relationships and we reminded the government of its obligation through media interviews and through social media that's available for anyone to use and reaches across ranging, across spectrum of people. Another thing we did was to give information that is based on best, best practice. Knowing that we belong to a global organization, we had a lot of information that came from different countries and that we were able to share. Another thing that we did was to assist in the mapping of stakeholders to, to the people that would come together in the consultative meetings. And being a grassroots organization, that enabled us to ensure that those that needed to be at the table, at the negotiating table, at the discussion table, were there. We also attended sessions and gave our views. How then can NGOs engage? NGOs can engage in a similar way, like a set did. First and foremost, NGOs need to identify their country status. Where is your country at? Does it have a national action plan? Does it intend to have an action plan? And also understand landscape. What language do your policy makers understand? Do they understand protests? Do they understand one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings? So map out your country and get to know what, how best to communicate. Create relationships. Have allies. Get somebody from the inside that you can talk to, that you can discuss with, that knows what's going on. NGOs also have a lot of information. Being the grassroots organizations, being the ones that deal with the people on the ground, give information. Another thing that NGOs can do is help in mapping out of stakeholders, just like we did when we are government forums. Share your expertise and your successes. Many NGOs have done some great work, but people at the national level might not know about it. Share your expertise, share your successes. But for NGOs to also effectively participate, NGOs need to invest in core competencies. There's one thing that an NGO is good at, and that becomes your area of competence. Share with that. Share that with, with, with the policy makers. Engage them with what you know best, and I'm sure you'll be invited when policy makers are making decisions or they are having their discussions. But they have, this might not only be practical for many NGOs because of their size and because of their capacity. So this leads to us having to form collaborative, uh, to, be, to collaborate, <coughs> form collaboration, form consortiums, form working groups, so that together you can engage policy makers. In conclusion, NGOs must recognize and acknowledge that your voice matters. Government cannot succeed alone. NGOs have a very important piece to, uh, part to play, and this is a complementary role. NGOs must play their complementary roles for road safety targets to be accomplished, especially in the process of putting together a national action plan.
And you can go to the various sites as resources, and you can have a look at the draft plan that Kenya has come up with. Thank you. So the launch is in, in June. Uh, is that, how do you anticipate that? What, what is your plans around the launch as an NGO? How will you ensure that people know about it? Sort of what are, what are your, your plans there? Uh, before we get to the launch, we have uh, the 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 mid 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 June. There's going to be a second consultative meeting, and this is putting together the different uh, views of the thematic areas that people will be will have. Been. For example, a lot of, some people want to do child safety, others want to deal with uh, road safety management. So all that will be put in one document, and it will be validated in the middle of June, okay. and thereafter there will now be a launch. What we will do, we will work with media, we will use social media, we will engage, we will have talk shows to talk about the essence of a work plan, the essence of a common plan for the nation. Um, we will link up with other NGOs um, through uh, emails, calls, those that we know, and I believe that uh, now we have a mailing list. Yeah. We have enabled the government to have a mailing list that that has almost everyone that deals with road safety. Yeah. So I'm sure there will be uh, an invitation that will be sent out from government okay. to the various NGOs for them to come and participate into this very important uh, event. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bright. Um, it was very interesting to to hear your your perspectives and how you have very been very active in 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 the whole process. Thank you very much, Bright. This webinar is available online, and you could go back and listen to it as many times as you like. Should you wish to learn more, we have collected a number of resources which can be found on our website. Thank you for listening, and have a safe day.